everyone, it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video I'm going to show you how to crochet a vintage Christmas dress pot holder. I made this pattern about 10 to 15 years ago and I decided to update the pattern with lots of new pictures and make a brand new video for you. This is a free crochet pattern on my blog and you can find that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. First, let's talk about yarn. If you're going to be using your pot holders as decorations like I am, then an acrylic yarn is fine. And I'll be using an acrylic yarn today for our demonstration. I'm using these three colors in Red Heart Super Saver. It's pink a bright green, and a, and a white. These yarns that are all sparkly, these are I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby. We have an off-white, a white up here, and they're basic red and green. Any worsted weight or medium weight number four yarn will work. Now, if you're going to use this as an actual pot holder, you're going to be pulling something out of the oven or off the stove that's very hot, I do not recommend acrylic. Go to using either I Love This Cotton or Peaches and Cream or any of your 100% cottons and even some of the cotton blends will work as long as they're a medium weight number four. The other thing is that it doesn't have to be in Christmas colors. You can use any colors of yarn that you want and maybe make some to match the kitchen colors that you have right now. The other things that you'll need is, of course, a crochet hook. And we're going to be using an H hook, which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a needle for weaving in your ends and attaching your little flower. And of course, you'll need your scissors. We're going to begin at the top with our circle, then we'll make the bodice portion, then we'll make the skirt, and lastly, we'll come back in and add the trim and a cute little flower. We're going to make our slip knot, and then we're going to chain 12 chains. We're going to take the tail of the yarn, put it over our hook, and pull it through that last loop. We'll snug this down. We'll add that little stay knot so that our loop stays put. And now we have 12 chains in a circle. We're going to put our hook in the 12 chain loop, pull up a loop, and do a little chain one. And that's going to get us to the top or the outside of our loop. Now, this is our tail of yarn, and we're going to be stitching over it as we go around, and that'll save us some time in weaving in. We're going to stitch 12 single crochets around this 12 chain loop. Snug that down a little bit. All right, so we're going to go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through both loops. One, there's two, three, four, six, there's ten, we need to do two more, eleven, and 12. All right, so there is 12 single crochets. We're going to join to our first single crochet with a slip stitch. We'll pull that loop through, then pull that loop through the loop that's already on our hook, and we're going to chain three. Now, we stitched over our tail of yarn, so we can go ahead and cut that off. We don't have to worry about that anymore. 
because we stitched over it so it's going to stay in place and that's how row one should look 12 single crochets around our 12 chain loop join and chain three now we're going to be stitching in the front loops and the back loops of these single crochets and what we're going to do is we're going to stitch two double crochets in each single crochet but we're going to be stitching in the front loops first our chain three counts is our first double crochet so yarn over we're going to go in the front loop and stitch a double crochet now if you don't know how to find your front and back loop if you look on the top you can see there's two loops all the way around the loop that's on this side that's facing you is the front loop the loop that's on that back side that's facing away from you is the back loop we're going to be stitching two double crochets working in the front loop only in the next seven double crochets so we'll put our hook in and stitch a double crochet and then a second double crochet in that front loop going in the front loop only I'm stitching two double crochets one and two All right, let's count what we've done so far. Our chain three count is our first. So two, four, six, eight, ten. This will be eleven and twelve. Thirteen and fourteen. Fifteen and sixteen. All right, so I've stitched two double crochets in eight of the single crochets working in the front loops only. So we stitched in eight, so we're going to leave nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, which are the four leftover single crochets unworked. All right, two double crochets in the first eight of our ring and leave the last four unworked. So now we're going to turn our work and we're going to do the same thing working back in the back loops, all right? So we'll go in the back loop of that first one. This one's a little bit more clumsy, but once you get that first one in there, you'll see. There's one and two. So we're placing two double crochets in the back loops of these eight stitches. Now, what I do to make it a little bit easier is I push those stitches from the previous front loops kind of forward, and it helps those back loops stick out a little bit so I can find them. All right, so let's go to the next back loop and stitch two double crochets. The next one, oops, and see by pushing that forward I can find those back loops just a little bit easier. This is the only row where we'll be working, we'll, where we will be working in the front and back loops. Alright, let's count and see how many we've got here on this side. So we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Here's our last one. There we go. 15 and 16. We need to have 16 
where we worked on the front loops, and 16 where we worked on the back loops. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to join to that first chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. Now, like I said, this is the only row where we'll be working in the front and back loops. The rest of this for the bodice portion will be working around all of these stitches. So you have 16 on the front, 16 on the back, and so that gives us 32 double crochets. Now for row three, we're going to be doing what's called two and two. Our chain three counts is our first double crochet, and we're going to stitch a double crochet in that same stitch. Then we'll stitch one double crochet in the next two stitches. All right, now we'll put two double crochets in the next one and two. And we'll repeat this working one double crochet in the next two and two double crochets in the next double crochet working all the way around what we've just done. All right, so one double crochet in the next two, one and two, and then two double crochets in the next. one double crochet in the next two, one and two, and two double crochets in the next. And we're going to continue to work this repeat of two and two, working all the way around the bodice until we reach back to our chain three. I've completed this row stitching all the way around the two and two, two double crochets, and then two double crochets in the same stitch. And now I'm going to join to the top of my chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. You can see how it looks. And now we're ready for row four. And row four is similar to row three. The only difference is we'll have three individual double crochets and then we'll do two together or two in the same stitch. So we have a chain three. We're going to stitch a double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three. We're going to stitch one double crochet in the next three stitches. There's one two and three and then we'll stitch two double crochets in the next stitch and then we'll repeat that one double crochet in the next three double crochets and then two double crochets in the next stitch. And repeat all the way around for row four. One, two, three, and two double crochets in the next and repeat all the way around till we get back to our chain three. I've completed row four, stitching three and then two in the same stitch 
all the way around till I get back to my chain three and then I'm going to join to my chain three with a slip stitch and again chain three and row five which is the last row of our bodice is done again like the previous row only we'll have four individual double crochets and then we'll stitch our two in the same stitch so we have a chain three we're going to stitch one double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three and then we'll stitch one double crochet in the next four double crochets there's three and four all right, now we're going to stitch two double crochets in this next double crochet and repeat. One double crochet in the next four. And two double crochets in the next one and two. And again, we're going to repeat working all the way around the bodice till we reach back to that chain three and then we'll join. One, two, three, I need one more. So just to repeat, four double crochets, one in each of the next four stitches and then two double crochets in the next and repeat all the way around for row five. I've completed row five. I'm going to join to my chain three with a slip stitch. And then I've already cut my yarn. I'm going to cut just a little shorter so I don't have as long a tail. And we're going to tie off. And I'm going to bring that to the inside. And I'll weave that in with my needle just a little bit later. But for right now, I'm just going to bring it to the inside to get it out of the way. All right, so now we have the bodice completed and we want to begin to add the skirt and I'm going to do my skirt in this bright green just for fun. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to count down from the top of where we started. So here's my chain three and we're going to count down nine. So the chain three is the first one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we're going to go in the next stitch bring in our green or whatever color you're using for the skirt there we go and now we're going to stitch 14 single crochets so we'll go in the next stitch one two three Four, that tail wants to get in the way. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. All right. So there's where we're going to begin putting our skirt on. At this point, before I do the back portion, I like to look and make sure it's even. Sometimes we accidentally add a stitch, and so the skirt ends up being a little cockeyed. So look at it. Make sure you have nine stitches here. You're going to have nine on this side, and then nine on this side. And of course, nine and nine is 18, so we'll count those. Let's see, there's... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then we'll turn over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So here's our next stitch, which lines up beautifully. And what we're going to do is we're going to go right in that stitch. 
and stitch a single crochet. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. All right, so now we're going to turn this over. We're going to join to that first single crochet, not where we joined here, but to the first single crochet. And chain three. All right, and so now we're going to be stitching around this for the skirt of our hot pad. Our chain three counts as a double crochet. We're going to stitch a double crochet in that same stitch, chain two, and then two more double crochets in that same stitch. This is our shell stitch. We're going to skip the next two stitches and stitch a shell stitch in the next. So we'll stitch two double crochets. chain two and two double crochets in the same stitch. And this is how we're going to form the flare and the funness of our skirt. So we'll skip the next two and stitch a shell stitch, which is two double crochets, chain two and two double crochets. Skip the next two and repeat a shell stitch in the next stitch. Skip the next two and a shell stitch in the next stitch. And this is going to give you five shell stitches on the front of your little dress. One and two, there we go. So we have five, one, two, three, four, five shell stitches on the front. So now we're gonna turn it over. We'll skip those next two and stitch a shell stitch. And you should end up with five shell stitches on the back of your skirt as well, which will give you a total of 10 shell stitches. Skip the next two. One and two. Chain two and two double crochets. Skip two. Skip two and a shell stitch. One and two double crochets. Chain two and two double crochets. One and two. And that brings us one, two to our last shell stitch. And so we have one, two, three, four, five on the back as well. And now we're going to join to that chain three from our first shell stitch. And then we're going to slip stitch right in that chain two space and chain three. All right. And this is the way that your little dress should look. 
you should have five shell stitches on the front and five on the back. Now for the next row, we have our chain three that counts as our double crochet and we're going to finish this shell stitch by stitching a double crochet, chain two, and a double crochet right in that chain two space of our first shell stitch. And then we'll repeat this all the way around for all 10 of our shell stitches. So two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets in the chain two space of the shell stitches. And we'll repeat this all the way around. And again, you'll have 10 shell stitches because we aren't adding or subtracting anything. Right now, we're just placing one shell stitch in the chain two space of each of the shell stitches. And we'll continue this all the way around. And again, we'll have 10 shell stitches. I've completed that row. You can see the skirt is starting to look really pretty. I'm again going to join to my chain three with a slip stitch. And then I'm going to slip stitch in that chain two space. Now, my chain three. This row is similar. We're going to be doing shell stitches in our shell stitches, but we're going to make a chain one in between. And by adding that chain one in between, it's going to cause the skirt to flare out just a little bit more. So here's our chain three that counts as our first double crochet. We're going to double crochet, chain two, and two double crochets for our shell stitch. And then we're going to add that chain one. Now we'll go to the next chain two space and stitch our shell stitch the same. Two double crochets, oops, chain two and two double crochets. and chain one. And so we're stitching it the same as the previous row. We're just adding a chain one in between each of the shells. And like I said, it's going to cause the skirt to flare out <clears throat> just a little bit more. All right, and you can already see it's already doing that by adding that chain one. And we'll continue this on around for all 10 of our shells. And then we'll join to our chain three as we did on the previous row. So just to repeat, we're stitching our shell stitch, two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet in our two, chain two spaces of our shell stitches. And then we're chaining one in between. working all the way around and we'll join to our chain three. I've completed this row working my shell stitches with the chain one in between. Here's my last shell. I'm going to make my chain one and now I'm going to join to my chain three, then slip stitch in that chain two space and chain three. Now this is the last row of the skirt in this color and then we'll add the little shell trim. And what we're going to do on this row is similar. The only difference is we're going to chain two in between our shell stitches. So here's my chain three that counts as my first double crochet. So I'll double crochet, chain two, and two double crochets in that chain two space of my shell. And then I'm going to chain two. Then I'll go to my next chain two space make my shell stitch, two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets. And chain two. So you can see that's going to cause it to flare out even more. Just makes the skirt look more like a skirt. And we'll repeat this all the way around, stitching our shell stitches in our shell stitches, the chain two space, and then chain two in between. We'll work this all the way around 
and join to our chain three, like we did in our previous rows. Shell stitch in the chain two space of the shell stitch and chain two. All the way around and join to your chain three. I've completed this row with my shell stitches and my chain two in between each of my shell stitches. I joined to the chain three and slip stitched to the chain two space of the shell stitch. And what we're gonna do here is cut our yarn. We're gonna add in our white or whatever color you want to do the little trim on yours. All right. There's my white yarn. We're going to go in the chain two space and chain three. Let me tag that down. There we go. Or tack it down, I should say. Get that out of the way. Here's our chain three. It counts as one double crochet, and we're going to stitch three more double crochets. One, two, and three. All right, I'm going to move that out of the way. And then we're going to stitch a single crochet around this chain two. So we'll go around, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through both loops. Now we're going to move to the next chain two space of the next shell and stitch four double crochets. One, two, three, let's bring this down a little bit, and four and then we'll stitch a single crochet around those chain two. And this is gonna give us just a nice edge that looks a little bit like lace on the bottom of our skirt. Four double crochets in the chain two space of the shell, then a single crochet around the chain two space. And see how that looks, isn't that cute? It looks really nice with this lime green too. We'll do this all the way around and join back to our chain three. And just to repeat, four double crochets in the chain two space of the shell. Single crochet around the chain two. Working all the way around the bottom of our skirt. I finished the little trim four double crochets in the chain two spaces of the shell stitches and then a single crochet around that chain two space. I joined to my chain three. I'm going to cut my yarn. Tie that off, and I do have a few ends to weave in here. I'm going to go ahead and pull that to the back, and then I can use my needle and weave these ends in later. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is add the trim. And the way we do that is you can choose whatever color trim you want. I decided to use white on this one. And you go in where you began your stitch here. Join in your white and chain three. Snug that down a little bit. We're going to skip the next one, stitch a single crochet and chain three. Skip the next one, stitch a single crochet in the next and chain three. And that's the way that the trim works. Skip, single crochet in the next and chain three. Skip the next, single crochet in the next, and chain three. And we'll work this all the way around the edge of the sleeve. <laughs> there we go, didn't want to grab. 
one, two, and three, skip, single crochet in the next, one, two, three, skip the next, single crochet in the next, and chain three. All right, and that brings us here, and I'm going to go right in there and tie off. And of course, we need to weave these ends in. And what I like to do is I like to put them together. So I'm going to put a little knot, just putting those two together like that. And then I'm going to push those on the inside, and I'll weave that in later. And that's how you do the trim. And I'm going to go ahead and do this side, and then I'll come back and show you how to make the cute little flower. So the last thing we need to add to our little vintage dress hot pad is a little flower. Now you can add a button if you want, if it's going to be decorative. You can add any embellishments that you would like. I like to just stick with a little flower. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a slip knot and we're going to chain two. Now we're going to go into this second chain and stitch six single crochets. One, two, around that string, there's three, four, five, and six, and it will be a little bit snug, but that's okay. All right, we're going to join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch, and we're going to chain four. We're going to slip stitch in the next single crochet and chain four. Slip stitch in the next single crochet and chain four. Slip stitch in the next single crochet and chain four. And repeat. One, two, three, four. And we'll slip stitch in that first single crochet. And you should have six petals. We're going to cut our yarn, but we're going to give ourselves a little bit to work with. We're going to grab our needle. We're going to make sure there's not a hole in the center. We'll thread this on. We'll go around just to make sure there isn't a little hole in the center. Now you can also add a little button to the center of the flower if you want to. All right, so the hole's closed up nicely. And now we're going to use this other one. There we go. And we're just going to make sure that it's to the center of the flower. So when we go to sew it on, it's in the center of the flower. All right, so here's our hot pad. And you can decide where you want it. Now, sometimes you'll see them there. Sometimes you'll see them up here. And I've seen some with several around. For this one, I'm going to put it right on the waist. The other ones, I put it up towards the top. But I just wanted to do something a little different on this one. Okay, and so what I'm going to do, make sure it's centered. I'm going to go in and just make some stitches around, making sure it's going to hold. my hand inside, make sure I'm not going through. You can go through both th thicknesses, it doesn't matter, but I just kind of prefer not to. All right, so I'm gonna pull that to the inside, and then I'm going to just use this one. To the inside. And then we can tie that on, make sure it's nice and snug, and our flower's not gonna go anywhere. Three knots usually do the trick. So here is our little vintage dress hot pad in bright colors. And then, of course, 
the two Christmas ones that I made earlier. And like I said, you can make them in any colors that you want. Thank you.